hopefully I'll keep this video a bit shorter and sweeter than some that I've done recently. Um, I've been involved in a few exchanges with members of Rational Dawn and this is on the back of that. This subject of, uh, of suffering and evil and, and omnibenevolence which is the characteristic to which it pertains doesn't seem to be going away. It's something I wanted to keep my nose out of uh, but I'm now going to stick my nose in that particular trough. Okay. Um, firstly a Chelsea shirt. I've got a Chelsea shirt on to, to waylay lots of Chelsea comments. I'm not an especial fan of Chelsea. I just work with a lot of Liverpool fans, a lot of Man United fans, and so it made sense just to rub their noses in it by wearing a Chelsea shirt now and again. Okay, so the subject then is omnibenevolence. First, I just want to give you a quick definition of benevolence, and then I want to ask some questions. These questions are specifically aimed to the members of Rational Dawn, but if anybody else wants to entertain the questions, feel free to do so. Benevolence, and I'm reading, I've written some notes down here, which I don't usually do, but I have on this occasion. Benevolence, dictionary definition, desire to be good to others. So, so any when we're looking at God's goals, God's desires, um, any explanation we may have for his behavior then, he can, you can balance it with other things, but those other things have to relate to good to others, to other sentient beings, uh, not to other larger goals such as, well, perhaps he's made the earth as his pet project and perhaps he wants to leave it running on its own just to see what happens. That kind of idea doesn't work because that doesn't show a desire to be good to others. That shows an indifference to others. So I just wanted to bear that, I just wanted to, to make that point. Benevolence is a desire to be good to others. Okay, so so what I want to ask first is um, what definition do you have then for omnibenevolence? Is it a grounded definition such as the definition I, I gave you? Or is it what I would regard as a more trivial and, and perhaps tautological definition? Something along the lines of this, that, that, that we're saying that God is omnibenevolent and we're going to define omnibenevolence as simply whatever God chooses to do. In other words, it's defined in, in, in rather than it being a characteristic of God, what we're saying is that omnibenevolence Benevolence is a characteristic that's derived from God. Whatever God does, that's omnibenevolence. I'm assuming that isn't your definition, but it does often seem to come across that way. Let's go on to the actual questions I want to ask you, and then maybe it'll become apparent why, why I feel that. Okay? This is the first question. Um, do you actually have any positive evidence for God's omnibenevolence? And when you answer this question, I'd like you to consider this other question. How does your argument differ from arguing God's omni-malevolence, uh, whereby we would disregard any good action that happens as happening for unseen malevolent reasons. So, for example, you can't say, well, an ev evidence of God's omnibenevolence is that good things happen to people, because I can make the, the argument from omnimalevolence in the same way that you argue away bad things happening. So that's the first question, okay? Can you give any evidence for God's omnibenevolence? The second question, how much suffering would you expect to see if God was not omnibenevolent? And can you give me some examples of where what we would see then differs from what we see now? How would things be different if God was not omnibenevolent? This is the third question, okay? First, just before I give you the question, um, it seems to me that you offer up omnibenevolence for argument, yet you seemingly um, countenance no possible falsifiability. As soon as any, anybody brings anything to the table, you just say, well, no, no, there's unseen reasons, there's unseen reasons, we cannot make any comment on it. Yet that's what you're doing, you're making a comment by uh, positing it in the first place. So here's the question, here's the final question. This is the question that I want you to ask more than any other. Can you give me an act or an act of omission which, if carried out by God, would contradict and in doing so falsify his omnibenevolence? That's the question I really want you to answer. Okay? I'll read it to you again. Can you give me an act or act of omission which, if carried out by God, would contradict and in doing so falsify his omnibenevolence? Thank you for watching this video.